Hi everybody, I'm Speha and this is my friend Kesha. <laughs> and I, I have already made a part one of this video and I thought that uh, became too long for me to upload. So here is part two. It is all about Amtec research. Uh, how the how Amtec research program is here in IAC and um, we'll you know get to learn a lot from Kesha here. So. So I want to ask you that, uh, you know, uh, when you are preparing for these research mm -hmm. interviews and all, and you have given, I think, how many interviews for? So um, I had registered four or five, okay. but um, in the, I got, when I got into IIC, I was like, okay, yeah. let's not give me more. And, and you were also selected in IIT Bombay, Bombay MS, as well. Yeah. Yeah. ID Bombay, there is MS. MS, yeah. They and just here it is, uh, and here it is MBA research. research yeah. mm. Okay. So uh, my question is, how was the interview process uh, both in IIT Bombay mm. and I IAC? If you can give us some glimpse of that. Okay. So firstly, there was the process for IIT Bombay MS. You applied through the portal on the the, the common portal that you have for MTech. After that, uh, they shortlisted based on your GATE score. And they gave you a test. There was a test this time. It consisted of, uh, if I remember, it was on the gate syllabus. Um, if you had prepared your gate syllabus well, you don't need to prepare anything extra for that. Um, beyond the, if you get shortlisted after that test, you also submit your SOP, which is your statement of purpose. There you write what areas you are interested in, why do you want to pursue research, and why IIT Bombay. Um, stuff like that. You know what an SOP is. Um, so I got the call for the interview. I gave the interview, there were four or five professors. I was asked uh, questions related to, so uh, we had an option of selecting uh, which subjects we want to interview for. So obviously I selected uh, computer architecture, operating systems, and uh, they asked uh, questions based on that. Uh, yeah, so like I mentioned before, they try to like keep you on your foot, keep you on your toes. They ask questions that you have not given thought to. And if you answer, they'll keep on digging deeper and deeper uh, until they're satisfied. So yeah, I was asked questions uh, like, which I had not given any thought to uh, based on the technical concepts of GATE. We, after that, I was also asked about my BTEC project, but uh, at that point I had not done any much work in that. So I just told them that, okay, I have not done much in that. This is my project idea. So they, they did not ask me uh, much about that. They did, however, open up my SOP in front of me and asked why I wrote that, or am I really interested in that? Or why did you do this course and so that? Basically, and, and, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. How much this SOP uh, matters? Um, not really. I mean, it's just like it's. They, I think they only read it the first time when I gave the interview. So they were going line by line. Okay, you have written that. Okay, that's good. Okay. So they, they were doing like that. So it's just a talk, talking point. You know, uh, when they don't want to ask any more questions, they want to see like how genuine your SOP is. So I. Rec it will come up in the interview. So I recommend you really like focus on that and you know, don't write anything that you're going to regret later. Yeah. Uh, any, anything fake or all, just be totally honest in that. Uh, it does matter. I think it does matter because uh, by then the professor was really happy with me and uh, by a smile I was able to tell I'm selected for sure. Yeah. And my technical interview went decent as well. Uh, yeah, it does matter. Uh, how was your IAC interview? Uh, how was my IAC interview? Um, so it was um, I would say it was a bit more lenient than IIT Bombay. Okay. Uh, they didn't dive any deep. They did ask good questions, but they didn't, you know, try to like gotcha, like you don't know this. They didn't <laughs> do anything like that. They started from the very basics, you know. And um, the thing is that how much you read and how much technical terms you mention, they'll catch you on that. So don't mention any terms that you do not know the answer to. So I had read a lot of advanced concepts like, you know, Radix uh, page, and they, they were very like surprised. Oh, you know this? Okay, tell me more about it. Uh, so I had read up in detail, so I was able to answer, but mostly, yeah, you have to uh, show interest that, yeah, I know that I'm not just giving this interview because, you know, uh, like I've studied it. I'm actually passionate about it. And uh, yeah, they ask technical questions, but don't like be afraid of anything. They're not going to ask anything um, very, very high level or beyond gate concept. If you study your gate concepts in detail and spend one month after the, um, after, after the result come, comes uh, to prepare one or two subjects in detail, and that's it. It's really not that hard, to be honest. It's not like, you know, they're going to ask tough DS algo questions, anything like that. Yeah, they did ask DS algo questions though, but they were very basic. Like, you know, insert a node in, uh, you know, your link list or, you know, delete this. And they're going to see you write code. They're going to open up a portal. They're going to say write code. And we're going to uh, see through it. Uh, there was a question on tree, which, which I'm forgetting. I think it was about some uh, deletion of a node from a tree. 
but uh, yeah, uh, there was also a question of inverting inverting a binary tree. So that was just the question that I had already read. So I was able to quote uh, quote quote that very fast, and they they saw with, that I was answering that question with such confidence. They like okay, no more questions about this. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, prepare well, do some programming. Yeah, that is actually an important point. You should definitely learn C, C plus plus any one language if you do not know already, because uh, programming is going to come up in your interview. It was. Present in the IIT Bombay uh, interview as well and ISC as well. Cool. Yeah. So, um, as you got selected hmm. both in IITs and IIT Bombay and IISC Bangalore, hmm. so what was the factor on the basis of which you decided that you want to come to IISC Bangalore? <sighs> okay. So, like we all know, for placements it's more or less the same. Some companies sometimes come in IISC, not in Bombay, and vice versa. So that's not really a fact, really a factor you should consider. Yeah, yeah. In um, you know, in any IITs, there are almost all the company yeah. same they they visit there, like yeah. in NIT also, right? Yeah. So but I think in for uh, like for example in data science in like yeah, data science comes so, many uh, so many companies. So many companies come here in IIC. Uh, and lot of CDC, lot of base. <laughs> The, yeah. the, the package is really high and they are coming for core profiles. They are yeah. not just coming for software developer and all. Yeah. So that's a difference that I am observing. Yeah. But yeah, beyond beyond placements, uh, one thing you should consider is the professor itself. Like, what are the pro Because in research you are going to work under a professor. Yeah. And you should consider his work, you know, what his alumni are doing. You should talk to some current students, like, you know, beyond work, beyond just work. You are going to ask him like, hey, how does he manage you? Is he going to micromanage you? Is he going to, you know, uh, sh uh, shout you out for every small mistake you do or he's going to be supportive because these kind of things matter because I would say MTech research is like a mini PhD so the, the advisor really matters uh, so definitely go through the profile talk to students and all so my decision was simple like uh, um, so like, like I said before even beginning for a gate I pretty much decided IIC but I still went through the trouble of trying to go through every professor in IIT Bombay and see uh, what professors are working on but yeah after after that going through their interest areas and all I decided that yeah we, actually I decided on a particular very very particular professor to work with in ISC and um, I, I mailed him even sir am I selected just one day after the interview I mailed him and he was like yeah you are in the top of the list don't worry and, and you got to work with that professor <laughs> only, only right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. very strategic move by me yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's very 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 important uh -huh. <laughs> so I want to ask you that um, how ha hectic your MTech research coursework is, like in comparison to PhDs, because you also oh. work, you also get to uh, sit and work with PhD yeah. students as well. Right? Everybody in my lab is a PhD. Yeah. Um, so PhD is really not as hectic as they make it out to be. Yeah. Uh, in fact, MTech research is more uh, hectic than uh, PhD because in PhD you have five years of time, and MTech research you only have two two point five years. Uh, is it more hectic than MTech though? I would say it's the same, but the amount of work and how much you work you get is is varying. Like in MTech, what happens is you get assignments. You 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 are burning the night candle. You are working day and night to finish that. After assignments are done, maybe there's a come comes a time where you're able to you know chill yeah. for two or three days. Whereas in MTech research, every day I have to put in six to eight hours of work every day. But uh, you know after. <laughs> <laughs> but after 5 pm, I generally am free. I play badminton, you know, I hang out with friends, and uh, just before sleeping, I work two or three hours again. So it's a really bad, bad uh, balance. You know, some people are like, you know, I'll work, and you know, someday I'll work 24 hours, someday I won't work. But for research people, it is better that you work consistently every day. And it is not that hectic. It is really not that hectic if, if you are able to, you know, uh, set up a very good uh, work ethic. Yeah. I'm going to work in this time, I'm not going to do anything. After this, I'm going to have fun and then I'm going to work again. Yeah, so, what is your sleeping and wake up routine, please? Not <laughs> yeah, Sometimes I, I don't sleep, like I just skip the day. I don't feel like sleeping sometimes. Uh, sometimes I. That passionate thing. <laughs> no, <I'm> passionate thing. <laughs> 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 he drinks a lot of coffee for that sake. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, yeah, so sometimes, you know, I don't sleep. Sometimes, generally, I sleep from, uh, I would say, two. Two, eight or nine. Yeah, that's on an average. Okay, I'm not like five hours. Or you have time. made uh, that routine, right, for yourself? Ha! Huh. It is for a researcher. It is very important to be in a routine. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's very good. Mm -hmm. So, I want to know how IAC really helps you to provide a good research environment. Good research. Okay, yeah. CSA department is uh, really really good. Some professors are really well. They are very supportive, 
and you, they're not like you know just doing it for for a job. They're doing it because they're really passionate about it. I've seen professors who can earn ten times what they're earning right now, but they choose to be in ISC. They don't go for an abroad college. Some, in fact, some of the professors have left uh, teaching at abroad colleges and come to ISC. So you know for sure that people are passionate about it, and they give their all to students. Uh, we have like around ten students in my lab. Pro the professor knows about what the student is working at, and he makes sure that. He does weekly meetings and he advises you. He's not like, hey, why have you not done work? He doesn't micromanage you. Yeah. Uh, well, like some professors are different, but yeah, my, at least my prof does not. But even like if you consider a bit stricter professors, everybody wants the best for you. Everybody wants you to excel in your course, and they're going to be really supportive either way. And uh, like, um, I was very intrigued to know that in research, do you have to come up with a problem that I want to work in this problem? Yeah, yeah, you, actually. Uh, uh, or your professor provides you with some problems? No, that, that's that, mostly for M Tech people. Um, okay. So I don't know for sure whether they do or not, but there's definitely a back and forth. Like you know, because huh, because like actually, in huh, huh. because in um, intelligence system, like hmm. I was, hmm. he was studying that his professor has provided him with. Huh, like three, options, yeah, yeah uh, problems that right. he has to look into and then decide. But he yeah. he could have rejected all three of them. Huh, that, he he could have come up with huh. his own. Definitely. But it's it, it's good if somebody huh. is giving you a huh. problem. Mostly you. professors provide you a list of options. Uh, like not there's not uh, anything formal or anything. He says you know I'm interested in let's say uh, I'm interested in GPUs. So these are the problem statements that I'm looking forward to. Uh, you know, go through them, read through them, or if you have anything better, just let me know. So there's a certain back and forth with the professor and you, and you, then you decide upon a research problem. Sometimes, uh, you know, you work on something else, and then you, uh, you know, then after the second semester, you decide on the research problem. Like for example, the project that I'm working on, uh, the research project that I'm currently working on, I when as soon as I joined the lab, I started working on that, and now in parallel, I'm looking for a research problem, or maybe I'll extend this problem. So yeah, there's a lot of flexibility there. Cool. Uh, Cool. And in terms of resources, mm. in terms of resources, oh, resources. Uh, so that is a resource <laughs> I brought from the lab. So not brand new, but you know, uh, I didn't have a laptop. My laptop broke down uh, right there, and I needed a new one. So I just uh, sent a message to the prof. Prof said, you know, uh, we have a MacBook Pro in our lab. Just take it. So you'll get your sufficient resources. You don't have a GPU. Make sure that you'll have it. So you'll never face a shortage of resources or things like that. So CSA department is well funded. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. So uh, I think we had a really fun session yeah. here. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. So um, I think uh, this interview ended really well. So I hope that many of you will find this helpful and got uh, will get out of this dilemma that what is MTech research, how it is different from MTech coursework and all. So yeah, this is all about it. Thank you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>